and I are. Let's keep it rolling with Hackett. This is something we've asked each other, uh, I don't know, 948 times this year. Uh, Hackett asked about the team's offensive identity. Uh, it's not uh, a good one. It's, it's, it has <laughs> been a very dog. successful offense. <laughs> Respect. And, um, we have a lot of things that we want to get better at, and we want to be sure that we continue those opportunities for the guys and continue to uh, get better uh, options for the guys. And uh, for us right now, a lot of improvement to be able to gain that identity. So he didn't even give an answer. He hey, just said it's not good. I, I respect the answer. I do because that's an honest answer. And, and and if he gave any other answer, we'd be sitting here calling him out for it. Uh, well, like, what are you talking about? I don't see the running game. Here's what I would have said if if you would have asked me that. If I was the head coach of the Denver Broncos, if I was a play caller on the offensive side of the ball. Well, right now our offensive identity doesn't exist, but I tell you what it's going to be. We're going to become the most physical team in football. I can't promise you that we're going to score a lot of points. I can't promise you that we're going to put up 25. Uh, we're going to have explosive plays. But I can tell you this. We're going to get physical, and we're going to get down to the basics, and 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 that's going to be our identity. When nothing's going well, well, we're going to run the ball, and we're going to get six yards a pop. That, that's what that's how I would talk. Mm-hmm. I, would, I, would, I would say the same thing he did. Things suck right now, but all I can control is how physical we're going to be, and that's where we're headed. He talked about yesterday, too, needing – to execute, like we, we as coaches, he said, got to drop. This was Monday. We as coaches got to come up with plays where our run game can be successful. The, uh, um, we talked about it yesterday and a misconnect or disconnect between Russ and Hackett uh, that that he was, you know, Russ was enabled from start. We yes. thought it was kind of cutesy. We act dudes about it in training camp. We thought it was kind of cutesy. Now we're thinking it might be a problem. Um, that Pete Carroll also did the same thing, but then at the end, Wanted to take it back, and he yep. really couldn't, and that's yep. where their disconnect happened. Um, Tyler will probably confirm or deny this, but I but I heard today also that it's legit. Mm-hmm. That that Russ has these sets of plays he wants to run, and Hackett wants him to run these sets of play. And right now there's no compromise, or they're saying Russ is audible and out of too many of the play calls. Or I was whatever. wondering that. And someone was telling me, and I said, well, it was an audible. He threw a 66-yard touchdown. A pretty good audible, mm-hmm. audible on that one. All right, let me give you something uh, a little bit more disturbing. I'll, I'll, number one, I'll second that. That is going on. Uh, probably over the last two, three weeks, you've had Russell Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett have their first real marital problems, uh, disagreements on on the philosophy of the offense. Uh, and there's so, there's been some behind-the-scenes conversations about those disagreements, about how they should be calling plays. More concerning to me, though, and I haven't told this on air yet, uh, because I've been, I've, been, I've been trying to get a couple people to tell me it just to make sure I felt good about it. And I've had a couple people tell me it now, and I feel good about it. I don't feel good about it, but I feel confident. <laughs> Russell is losing his mind out there. He's losing his mind. He, he's at the line of scrimmage using audibles from, from the Seahawks. The guys don't oh. know what the audibles are. I, I, I mean, he, he's using code words. The, the guys don't know what the code words from are. The last offense. And, and they're coming back to the huddle, and they're like, dude, what are, you, what are you saying up there? We don't know what the play – we don't know what that is. He, he, he's, he's, he's losing his mind right now. It, that was kind of even before you gave us some of that. Remember the Graham Glasgow play, uh, the run play? And they say, hey, he checked to something, and no one knew what it was. Yes, yes. That's, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. It's That was in week, was that the Colts? So right there, it just shows you, Russ, put the wristband on. Put the you, wristband you, on. You, you're not remembering the right place. And you know what bunker. else? Though? Let me, I'll ask both of you guys this. Why not run more hurry up? And it's exactly what we talked about with the uh, Hank Scorpio and Jared Goff when they were on the Rams and got to a Super Bowl. Why aren't they immediately running to the line of scrimmage Hackett's talking to Russ, and then you are in your formation ready to call the play at 15 seconds rather than just getting set at that point. Okay, that, that's a fair question, uh, and, and I feel like that's a, a little bit of the easy way out for a lot of people is they're like, just go to hurry up football, and I like hurry up football. It's a great change of pace. If, if you've got an offense that knows what they're doing, it's an incredible change of pace. Mm-hmm. And Especially I loved here in it. Denver, too, because you now use the altitude. Because what was the one advantage defensive linemen had over offensive linemen? They, they got to rotate in and out. They mm-hmm. got to stay fresh. So on third down, I got a fresh pass rusher coming in who's drooling, and, I, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and I'm, I've got my mouth dropped trying to catch my breath. You're right? on the eighth play of your drive. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, but in hurry up, those guys got to stay on the field. They don't get to substitute. So I loved it as an offensive lineman when things are going well. But when things are not going well, Josh, I do not like it because what happens in that situation? Well, you're not calmly talking to the fellas. You're not calmly communicating things <laughs> to the fellas. You're at the line of scrimmage. You're trying to say, hey, we got two jet. We got all go special. We got this going on. You got signals. You got it's just it's just an opportunity for 11 guys to not be on the same page because you're, you're using signals and everything else. 
I'd rather see them do the opposite. Just huddle up every single time, take as much time as you need, call the most basic plays you can, but make sure that everybody knows what the hell they're doing. So you're keeping it simple in that format. Yes. Okay. And go under center. And go under and center go under as center. much as possible. Please. For the love of all football gods, go under center. It's not always as simple as going under center. Well, Leggy, but, but, Leggy, but asked, can, but yeah. Leggy asked the question, and Leggy's been on the show for years here, and even with, with uh, the pass regimes, they had the same issue. You're going to allow three and four wide, and your your offensive line struggles. You, you aren't doing anything to help those guys. Mm-hmm. Why, why are you going three and four wide and, and leaving those a struggling offensive line? We talked about it yesterday. Backup guy at left guard. Yep. Uh, uh, third string guy at center. Uh, second or third string guy at, at right guard. Third string guy at right tackle. And and you're going four wide? Yeah. You know, Scott, I, I mentioned this the other day, and that, that's part of the stuff that bothers me the most about our – our first 15, our scripted plays, and when you come out of halftime and you've got six straight passes, the very first thing that needs to go through Nathaniel Hackett's mind as a play caller, how can I make life easier on my offensive line? And 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 and, and yes, that's a little bit of a cop-out because it's a problem right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you don't call plays that your offensive line is going to be successful at, guess what? Russ isn't going to be successful. The wide receivers aren't going to be successful. You need to think... I'm the left tackle. I'm the right tackle. What does this do to my life when I call this play? We uh, got to take a time out. Our lunch hour has come to an end thanks to our friends at Slim Chickens. You brought up Leggy. He's actually going to join us at 2 o'clock, and he's got a new piece out at ESPN.com. Only that's one in when you spell it. Uh, talking about just how bad these Broncos are. Uh, his headline reads, Broncos offense and Russell Wilson trending on the wrong side of history.